Hi guys, Sarah the Northwood Stitcher here, back with some more goodies. I have hit a couple of thrift stores and I, they were mostly Goodwills, which are the most popular ones around here. I have not had much luck finding stuff lately, but to be honest, I haven't been out and about as much either. I got a couple of books. I didn't feel the need to share those because I haven't read them. I don't want to give my review on any of them. They were books that I was excited about though, so I have those. And I did find something really cool. <laughs> I just love. This looks like it was a handmade piece because on the inside it's marked $25. I got it for two. So all that this is, is that little cardboard cone form that somebody has used a type of plaster to form this adorable Santa. It is signed. It looks like it says Jim on the back, 2018. The inside of it is marked $25. And I paid just two for it. Being the mad Santa collector, I just had to have him. He's awfully cute. I don't know if I should wash it or not. I'm a little fearful of taking off any paint that might be on him. So I think I'll leave him as is. I think he's really cute. So that was a fun find. Now that all of my Christmas stuff is put away, I'm not quite sure where he'll stay. He might just be my little um, piece to influence me to pick out some Christmas stuff. And then I have this thing for these ornament shapes, the antique ones with a depressed center. I love these. So this, of course, was a broken package of three that I got for $2. And I am so excited to have those. I think they really capture the light and they're very vintage color and looking. So I've got a blue, a silver, and a green. They're just awesome. So those were my fun finds. And that was, uh, that was just good to do. I was glad to get out and find that stuff. I actually was there because I lost one of my bracelets. I usually have a, a silver bracelet on this arm that I bought for myself at a thrift store for $18 just a few years ago. It fell off, I think Saturday, and I haven't been able to find it. And I've done, I've searched everywhere. I went back to the store that we went to to find my husband some shorts. Retraced my steps twice in that store, called the store, before I came back, nobody's reported it missing or nobody's found it. Um, so I'm just going to have to let go of that somehow. We'll see. I think I told you too that I was collecting in the bucket in the center of my room here. I'm trying to squirrel all of my frames out into the center of my room so I can have a framing matchup day. I don't think I'll necessarily get to framing everything but I'm creating piles of frames and the goal is actually to clean out one of these cubbies that I have under the eaves here. And once that's done, pull out all the cross stitches I have, match them up with some frames or make some decisions on them. Now, when I stitch something, I usually just put it in a pile and forget about it until something hits me that's inspiring. But I thought, what a great opportunity to put other things in the pile that need to be finished. So I brought up, this was my jewelry case that I've shown in an earlier video. I got this at a Goodwill, and I think it's just a travel case. I've changed it into a little cross stitch case. So I take this on retreats, or I have it on my table side when I'm stitching. I want a cross stitch for the top of this. So this is going into the pile of frames. And I'll show you why. I have done this with baskets and things that I have. So this, of course, excuse the noise, that's our garage door going op open. This is a basket that I have had for probably 15 years, and I finished it to house some cross-stitch stuff with a little prairie schooler, and I can't remember her name right now, but I put her in a hoop mounted the hoop on top of the basket, got some, this is upholstery cording around it, 
And now I have a really cute basket. Now these finished baskets that I do, I put on display. As soon as you walk into our house, we have a deacon's bench and I set them out. There's three of them, I'll show all three. So that's my biggest one. This is my next biggest one. Cape Cod girls, they got no combs. They comb their hair with codfish bones. I showed this in an earlier video as well. This was a basket that was a purse basket that came lined. It's not a long burger, but it's just beautiful. It was an excellent shape. It had a painted design on the top. So in order to cover that, I simply just mounted an oval hoop cross stitch on top. And then with the uh, screw for the hoop, I just put on a little braided and beaded pull tab for lifting and opening. So I absolutely love this. This is another must take along to retreats. This will house all of my purse things. And then I've got this adorable little hands-on design. I remembered. I think this was released in 2016. This is O Whale. <laughs> I fell in love with that one. This is my smallest basket. Absolutely adorable. <laughs> now with this one, I mounted it on a foam board, glued the foam board to the top, and then I braided some, I guess you would call it packaging twine, rope twine, I don't know. Very inexpensive. And then I braided it to the end, set a bead, made some little tassels, tied them in knots. So now I have a way of lifting this top as well. And I just put in a little piece of felt in the bottom because I think it was a little it showed glue and stuff. So there's lots of great ideas for unfinished products that you might find at thrift stores or yard sales. And just dressing them up really changes their function and their design. I also have other things to put in my frame pile. Something like this that I found. I don't remember where I got ah tells me where I got it. I got this at a Goodwill and it says $4. So that means I either paid $4 for it or I paid two if it was a half price day. This has a great little latch. I have not done anything with it, but I'm gonna toss this in my pile of frames because I don't know when I'll come across something in my pile that can be added to the top. This I remember very well that I got at a thrift store down on Cape Cod and it was damaged, so it was on sale. Who cares? I'm gonna cover it. But look at the latch on this, isn't that cool? Now this is really heavy and there are some spots on it, but I think that adds to the character. It just kind of ages it, so I'm not too concerned about it. something inside. Another chest. <laughs> I forgot about this one. <laughs> so this is really clean inside. So I am hoping if I don't have something already in my pile of finishes to do something for my husband. So this looks more like a seafarer's chest. If not, for this one. I don't remember where this one came from. Who knows? <laughs> Is there anything inside? No, it's empty. <laughs> but what a cute little box. Now I can still paint it. I can distress it with some stain. I can do something to change the color. But I really like all the detail on this. And I think this is really cute. So things for my of things to be framed. I'll get to that. Oh, what else do I have to show you? Oh, fun mail. I should probably pull this up so I can tell you how I found it. 
I ordered something from Amazon recently, and I'm really happy with it. When it came, it was a little project bag. Let's see. It was a mesh zippered bag, and it looks like I paid $9.99 for it. They had different colors. It's double handled. It has this little index faux stamp on it so you can write on it what you want. I don't think I will. It's got two zippers. So there's an outside see-through zipper. And then in between the handles is the main zipper, which is a solid core. It's not the biggest, but it's a good size for small projects. And I thought it was just cute. $10 was about what I wanted to pay. So you can look this up by searching for mesh project bags or mesh zipper bags. And it's put out by Pendency, P-E-N-D-A-N-C-Y. And this is 11 by 13, almost 14 size. So this is the large size. Doesn't seem like it is, but it is. They've got gray, green, blue, and pink. All regularly $12, now $9.99. So I might go back and get a few more but I also might look for some bigger ones. I do like this double handle, because this is great if I just want to take one thing off to a stitched group instead of a massive bag of things. So that was my happy mail. That was fun stuff. What else did I want? Oh, I also wanted to show you my flea market flowers. I have made some progress, you guys. So this is Flea Market Flowers by Lori Holt. And I have made it to the third and final column. How exciting. <laughs> I have a strategy. Now if you see, I really want to get this done. This last column, I've got what? Five five cells to do. Now if I do all the green in this top one, plus this last petal, I'll be done with that one. I will take the greens, I'll do the stems in this, the stem in that one, and the stems on these, and I should be able to really cruise through the rest of it, with the exception of this big one, which I think has six different colors in it. One, two, three, four. Well, maybe it's four. But it's such, such a tricky stitch because there's so many stops and goes and stops and goes. So if you are having trouble with it, do what I'm doing and do it one cell at a time and give yourself a skip day. Um, it's brilliant when it's finished. It's definitely worth the trip. <laughs> the trip down frustration lane. Some people might just fall in love with it and cruise through it. I don't know why I didn't fall in love with this. It was just a lot of stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. But I'll be so thrilled when this is done. I won't be happy trying to frame it. I think it's an odd shape because I did an 18 count and I'm using two threads. But I really wanted those colors to be very vibrant and pop off. And they look with two strands on an 18 count, they really look dimensional. They really pop off the fabric. So that was my other thinking for doing it and a thickness like that. Put that off to the side. Okay, I'm gonna pause this for a second. I found it. It was the 1995 Prairie Fairy by Prairie Schooler. So that was the design on that basket. I'm looking for something in my massive prairie schooler binder. Now, I don't think this is all of my prairie schoolers, 
I have tried to get them all in one place and then I find them in buckets in different places. So I've given up trying to put them all in one spot for now. But I'm on the hunt right now for, I don't know what it's called, it's the bunny stitches. And a lot of you know what I'm talking about, but I have a friend, Judy, she's doing the bunnies. And I don't know if I still have my bunnies in my Easter, my Easter binder, or if I put my, put them with all my other Prairie Schoolers. But as soon as I saw hers, I'm like, oh, I have to do those. It's very dangerous for me to go through this binder because there's so many things I want to stitch. I think I'm getting warmer. That's another little bunny. Those are cute bunnies. Stop, stop. <gasps> Found him! <laughs> I don't know if we could possibly go... We can't go through this whole binder, guys. It's take hours. But, but, I'll show you, I show you. This is what I was after. Book number 178. Bunnies. Aren't those wonderful? Now she did hers on a light blue. And that's what I'm going to do. I really loved how they came out. I will do a floss toss with the blue that I choose. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it now while I have you guys. But I want to make sure that the blue that they have listed to use won't get washed out on the blue that I choose to use. Because I really want a light blue, almost a pastel, baby blue. We'll see. But these are so cute, you guys. All stitched up as little pillows and a dough bowl or a tear. And I have to, I have to start this. So that is a definite. But on my way through the binder, I found other bunnies. So there is a problem. I really shouldn't go back. Let's see, I'll go to the end. I see the Halloween ones I did earlier. This, oh, there's more Halloween ones. I didn't do Boom Moon. Ay, 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 ay. So many stitches. So very little time. Okay. Nope. But then there's also Welcome Spring, which is another great leaflet of theirs. It's book number 153. I gotta show you guys. So I might need to do some of these. Those are great. So I don't know if I do the barn. It doesn't really pertain to me. I don't think I do the house. I definitely would do the rooster, the chicken with the chicks the ducks, the lamb, the bunnies. So maybe that, and the little bunny up top. So maybe that'll help pare it down for me so it's not so overwhelming. And I think I might change the color of these as well. I don't think I'll do them on black. Actually, it looks like they stitched it as a full coverage. Some are blue and some are brown. Yeah, some are blue and some are brown. And I wonder if they show that in here. In the chart. Yeah, they do. Interesting. It pays to look closely at the chart. I always study my charts before I start stitching. Maybe that's why I don't like kidding things up because I, I will read the chart over and over again before I actually find the fabric, pair up the floss. So it takes a while. There's so many in here I want to get done. Oh, I love this. There's another bunny. I don't know where he came from. Can't show him because he's just a chart, so I don't know what that's all about. This is a, another absolute love of mine that I need to do. This is book number 114. The Needle's Eye, 
The needle's eye is wise enough for two friends. That's one saying. And the other one is, the needle's eye, oh, they're both the same saying. The needle's eye is wide enough for two friends. I can think of so many people I'd like to do that for, as well as myself. That's just, it's lovely. What a great stitch. And then there's a tiny little one. Do they have that one in there too? Yeah, they do. Where the needle goes, the thread follows. So that's great for any quilting friends that you might have who might quilt and stitch. So that's book number 114. The Needle's Eye. Can't I can't pull that out right now. Must be have. Must be have. So many Christmas ones that I want to do. And I love it. There are some other great ones in the spring fall chart and that's chart number 90 if you can still find it i don't know how easy it is to get this one so this is chart 90 spring and fall that takes care of all kinds of holidays on with just this one chart i love the squirrel and the robin and the cat and the turkey. That's a great turkey. That's a beautiful turkey. Too often, a lot of these charts are just too cartoony for me. And I'm like, eh, nah, I don't want to stitch that. I think when it comes to animals, I prefer them to look like animals and not a rendition. With the exception of these cute little bunnies. All right, we're going backwards, backwards, looking for the bunnies. Trying not to pull out more. This is another favorite. I need to stop doing this, you guys, and I need to go look for that fabric. Because that'll be half my battle. This is book number 24, and it's called Prairie Birds. Prairie Birds. Ah. Oh. Isn't that lovely? I mean, if you don't want to do a bunch of Easter eggs and silly bunnies, this is wonderful for spring and fall. Oh, the hummingbird, the robins with their nest, the chickadee with their little birdhouse. I love it. The Cardinals. Oh, there goes the garage door again. He's back. All right, I'm putting this one away. As much as I want to start it. I would do that one on a dove gray. All right, I'm going to put this up. I'm going to go grab the fabric for the first bunnies I showed you. All right, so this may satisfy my itch. On a quick search, I have found a 28 count Lugana scrap, and this is Heavenly Creations Summer Sky. That's a great piece. I think, realistically, I can probably get one ornament on here or a pillow. But I do have to take the measurements, but I think this is a really great color for some of these. And I'm not gonna lose the blue in these. So that is something I will play with. And also I found a 14 count mixed berry Joblin. Can you see the purple? And it almost has blue hues to it. So that's a really great color. And I think that would be great for some of these. What am I doing to myself? 
<laughs> I'm gonna match these up. So next I'll pull out some, pull out some flosses, do some tosses. Cause I don't think I'll do all of them. I think I'll just do a, a few for now and then sit on the rest. Cause I don't think these are very big. So I think that little scrap piece is gonna do perfectly. Let's see. 33 high by 43 wide. I think that'll be really cute. And they'll be fun to stitch. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Do I make them into pillows? Do I make them into ornaments for my tree? I don't know. It remains to be seen. Where can I put this? I don't know what I'm doing. Put it over here for now. And I'll go pull my floss. So I think I've got, I think I've got 12 whips downstairs right now. Currently I'm only working hard on three of them. I need to pull out that sweatshirt again. I got so upset about the small paw print. I don't know why. A lot of you said just leave it, stitch the big ones next but I have yet to sit down and start that. And I really want that sweatshirt to be done because I want to wear it this season before it gets too hot. But even if I don't, I can always make it my fall stitch and flip that around. And then I have that small strawberry stitch that I showed you that I have yet to start. Let me pull that one out of my bag. I showed this a few videos back. It's a little Riolis kit and the only thing that's actually cross-stitched are the leaves. This entire berry is beads. And then they're the bigger flowers, strawberry flowers that are beads. There's an awful lot of bead work in here. Now the kit came with a 14 count fabric that's just, I don't think it will do anything for it. So I switched it out to do, do it on a opalescent white Ada. I want to say it's 14 count. It might be a 16 count. I had started a stitch on it. So you can see the little blemish in the center. So I do have to line that up and start it right. Oh, I got a dog hair on it. That's just love. So that's something else I need to get started on. Because I think once I get started on it, it'll go really quickly. Maybe not with all the beads. <laughs> Look at the beads. I might leave this one upstairs so when I'm zooming or something, I can have something at my hand ready to stitch. But this is awfully cute. <sighs> so I'm going to go torture myself a little longer with all these projects that I want to do, haven't started. I need to go work on one of the ones downstairs, and then I'll show you some more next time we chat. Thanks for stopping by and watching me. Hopefully you guys are as busy as I am. And please drop me a line on what your projects are. I'd love to hear about them. Might send me down the rabbit hole. You can enable me for a change. Talk to you soon. Happy crafting. Happy stitching. Be safe. Ha, 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 ha.